Multifamily Matters, a weekly radio show that discusses the current topics and trends in the multifamily industry. Stay tuned and listen to the movers and shakers in multifamily. Share their opinions and thoughts about what's old, what's new, and where the multifamily industry is heading in the future. You are listening to Multifamily Matters because multifamily matters. Well, welcome and thank you for tuning into Multifamily Matters, the only broadcast radio show in the nation that's solely dedicated to the multifamily industry. I'm your host, Paul Marks, and we have a great show with wonderful guests who are experts on today's topic. Today, we're going to discuss several creative and interesting ideas and tips for owners of and operators of multifamily properties. And joining me by phone from California are multifamily industry thought leaders, Joe Killinger, a partner with Pono Asset Management, and George Pino, CEO of Commercial Brokers International. Uh, welcome, guys. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, and good morning in Houston, and uh, thank you for having us, Paul. No problem, no problem. We, uh, I, I guess full disclosure for our listeners, uh, Joe, you are a prolific poster of very interesting <laughs> posts and articles, uh, and I read several of yours that I thought would be great uh, to for our listeners to, to kind of get a feel for some of your ideas. Um, obviously, it comes from years of experience, and we're going to go into that a little bit later in the show. But uh, let's, uh, you know, you had several topics, one of which I think uh, is always of interest to our listeners are you had, a, you had a post that were the five ways to increase the revenue on your rental properties. And, um, and I, I'll just kind of, uh, for our listeners, give them the, 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 those five topics, then we can go through each one. You had increase occupancy and then in parentheses smartly, so to smartly increase your occupancy, which is important. Raise rent smartly, be consistent with late fees, minimize turnover, and find additional revenue streams. So um, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. I can tell you one thing that we did is we owned um, a 394-unit property in uh, Dallas at one point. And it was it was a Class B, B-minus asset. And... Um, there was it was all there was no covered parking, so we took about I want to say out of the three ninety four we put like seventy carports in, and we charged an extra I don't remember what it was twenty five dollars a month um, for to for the covered parking, and so we, you know we're look, always looking for those type of things. How can we add revenue? Um, accent wall, right? Uh, pink, you know, giving people that are leasing your property. A, uh, the opportunity to have an accent wall, and then you charge, you know, depending on your area, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars extra a month. Um, so we're always looking for those type of extra revenue add-ons. And, and and give give our listeners an idea, like when you said you built those carports. Obviously, there was a capital expenditure involved. What what kind of an ROI did you have? How quickly did it, did it pay back for you? Well, uh, I'll step in on this one if you don't mind, because yeah. uh, I, I I was uh, involved. On on this on the um, on the price itself, um, the carports cost us. They were metal carports, uh, really nice uh, new construction, um, built uh, for about seven hundred and fifty dollars per car carport, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we ended up charging, as Joe mentioned, uh, it was twenty five dollars um, a a uh, additional parking for covered parking a month. So, which translated to about uh, three hundred dollars a year. So, the payoff itself was only in about two and a half years. But more importantly, when you look at it at a cap rate basis, right? And the valuation of the property itself, each one of those carports that cost us seven hundred and fifty dollars on an eight cap um, for that general area actually increased the property about three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Wow! So, you know, e- immediately seeing a uh, jump by almost you know 500 percent right that's right yeah that that's great and, yeah. and, the, and the payback being you know a couple of years is 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 pretty good too absolutely you know the beautiful part about the carports was that uh you know a hundred percent of the income essentially went to the bottom line because it really didn't require any kind of maintenance or additional maintenance we already had porters that would clean up the grounds uh, and things like that it's not like there was any uh crazy maintenance or expenses added to the carports themselves 
Um, you know, part of the construction, the way we did it was, you know, for lighting, we put solar lights installed on it so we didn't have to worry about running wires. We didn't have to worry about the maintenance on that. We didn't have to worry about utility um, uh, bills. So 100% of the revenue was essentially straight to the bottom line of the NOI. That's great. You know, Joe, in, in this post, you, your, your very first item was increase occupancy smartly. Let's talk yeah. about what, what, what you mean by that. Well, uh, you know, we've got – we had, actually, I can go back to that property. When we were going out and we did the uh, market survey, um, we were – the current – the previous owner had been so far under market that he was just put – they were just putting people in that, you know, really they were just kind of doing a pulse because they wanted to get people in there. We went in, did a market survey – Made the unit, made the units uh, what was typical for there. Really cleaned them up nice, added some nice appliances, um, and then we raised the rents. And you know those people, they moved in. They had a really nice property, right. really nice home, and you know we got like a, I think it was 18 percent increase on the rents, and it was just a really good return for our our, our money. That's great, and you also have down here. Be consistent with light fees. Yeah. Yeah, you're always going to get, you know, we. Get, I was just dealing with this yesterday. We've got a couple of tenants that, you know, they, they tell you they got hard times or, um, you know, and it's, you've, you want to have a heart, but yet, you know, you want to make sure that you're enforcing the rules because if you don't collect the, the late fees on one tenant, you know, they're going to talk and then you're going to have the whole property come and you say, listen, I know that you gave X person uh, time and so I really would like to have the same time, and then all of a sudden you're not going to be getting any late fees. Yeah, yeah. you uh, want to be strict with it. Oh, ultimately, it kind of boils down to being um, or holding all the uh, the tenants accountable for their responsibilities, while you're accountable for your responsibilities, which is to give them a you know a give give the tenants, uh, the residents that live there, a clean um, say uh, you know clean safe place to live that uh, is um, is there. But they they have their own responsibilities, which is essentially to maintain the property, uh, their own unit, and also to you know pay rent and by holding them accountable it puts everybody on the same playing field we're talking about uh ways to increase uh revenue on your rental properties and and uh joe you you had listed in here something that it 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 seems so uh logical and so basic but obviously that it's it's an issue uh because people are always asking about it minimizing turnover what are your tips for that oh um you know well, there's, there's, actually, that's kind of a broad one, so I guess we'll kind of pick it. But if you – we're working on a deal right now where we've got tenants that, you know, our rents, we could increase them a good amount, but these tenants can't afford it. So we're going to have to go in, talk to them, see what they can really afford. Um, I don't want to have just an empty building. I don't want to see them just out on the street, and we've sitting that, we're sitting there paying the mortgage and not having any income coming Sure. In. So we're being very careful with that. Um, you know, always be communicating with your tenants. You know, a lot of them, if you don't, if you just sit in your office, your leasing office, and you're not talking to your tenants about everything that's going on, communication is a lot of it. And, you know, if you are talking to your tenants about everything you've got going on, when there's a financial problem with one of them, bring them in, communicate to them. And it's you don't want to all of a sudden get all these requests and for and that goes back to um, maintenance. You want to get all these maintenance requests. Handle them. Take care of them. Take care of your tenants. And if you start taking care of the tenants, you communicate with them. You're going to find that you're going to minimize your turnover. Right. And I, I, I noticed, um, you know, on some other folks that that we've had on on the show previously, they've talked about, you know, obviously the, one of the big. Uh, issues in the apartment industry is getting creating a sense of community uh instead yeah. of instead of a bunch of people that are that that don't even know each other um yeah. how, have you, how have you dealt with that on your properties as far as trying to get uh, in get, getting the the residents engaged community events um you know we do some community events we also if they refer somebody in we go to our tenants and say listen if you you have somebody that you want to you know pick your pick your neighbor We'll give you a X amount off of your rent if you refer somebody in. And so it gives them a sense of, okay, I can help 
create my own community here. And then the community events are really big for us. We do stuff for our kids. Um, we will go around to our property managers. We'll go around to the community and try and get, like, for example, in one of our properties, we have um, a dentist. We have uh, a doctor that works over there. He'll, they'll give certificates to our people to say, listen, we'll give you a discount if you come over here and, and get work done or get a checkup here, and then just to try and help them. Eyeglasses were a big thing. We had a neighbor uh, that, that uh, I want to say, one of the uh, big eyeglass companies came in and, and did a free eye checkup for the kids and that kind of stuff. And it really gave the people a real sense of, okay, I belong in this community. Um, they're helping me out. Right. And whatever you can do to really make them feel like they're part of something is critical. That's great. All right. Well, we're going to have to take a short break. We're going to be right back after these messages. You're listening to Multifamily Matters because multifamily matters. Tired of being burned by your carpet vendor? Nobody has you covered like Rasa Floors. They lead the industry with same-day service and cutting-edge technology, like their online ordering portal and mobile app, so you can place orders instantly. The professionals at Rasa Floors are the industry experts offering the hottest new styles of carpet and hard surfaces that will help you achieve your goals. Visit them on social media, watch their videos, and look for them at local trade shows. Rasa Floors will help you make ready your apartment homes for new residents. For more information, visit rasafloors.com. Your property and liability insurance is one of your highest expenses. Put Ted W. Allen & Associates 50 plus years of experience in multifamily insurance to work for you. If you have multiple properties on separate policies, you may qualify for a master policy, which can eliminate the need for multiple insurance renewals and provide you significantly lower premiums. Call Ted W. Allen & Associates at 281-378-7500. That's 281-378-7500 or online at tedwallen.com. Your multifamily property's water and sewer rates are skyrocketing every year. The only way to lessen the impact is to reduce water consumption through water conservation. eConserve has pioneered a no-cost, no-risk water conservation program, and it doesn't cost you a penny. A property in Houston is saving over $196,000 a year with this no-cost program. Call eConserve today at 713-662-3220 for a free analysis of your property. That's eConserve at 713-662-3220. Well, we are back and you are listening to Multifamily Matters and we are discussing several creative and interesting ideas and tips for owners and operators of multifamily properties. I'm Paul Marks and joining me by phone from California are multifamily industry thought leaders, Joe Killinger, a partner with Pono Asset Management, and George Pino, the CEO of Commercial Brokers International. Before we jump back into the conversation, I do want to remind our listeners that if you'd like to provide show topic, guest ideas, uh, or suggestions, or, or just listen to any archived episode of Multifamily Matters, please go to our website at multifamilyradio.com. So, uh, Joe, one of the things that uh, one of the articles the, the, uh, that you wrote or the, the postings that I saw was best way to attract dog owners to your property. And, and that's such a huge thing these days, pets, having pets yeah. on, on properties. And, 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 and that goes to just the general topic of, am of what amenities are hot out there right now that, that attract residents. But let's talk about the dog owners. Uh, your article uh, you were talking about um, uh, creating partnerships well, you've got with about 70% of the rental market uh, has a pet now. Yeah. Has a dog now. And so if you don't, I mean, you you want to be able to, to capture that portion of the market. So you really have to make the opportunity for yourself to capture them. And so some of the ways that you had mentioned doing that, um, you know, I thought were you know, kind of genius. Uh, hopefully, uh, people are doing this. Well, my this. mother would be thankful that you said <laughs> genius, but now, <laughs> I don't know that that's true. It's just a little research. Well, uh, you know, 
when you have if you if you have the space, I guess for example, if you have a laundry room mm-hmm. and you want to put in a wash basin where somebody come in and can wash their dog, that's always that's huge. That's, right. That creates they're not going to have to do it in their their tub or their their sink at home. Um, you know, and you want to make sure that as you're, you're building it out, that you have the opera. You know, you want to make sure the drain system is prepared to handle it. Right. And um, flooring for dogs, you want to take that into considerable or to consideration. Um, hard surface flooring is the best. Um, things like that, you really need to be thinking about. Okay, if I have a dog, what what would be ideal for me? And you know, it's a great amenity to add. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know, um, you know, there are so many, uh, obviously the newer properties that are being developed today, uh, they seem to always have a dog park, you know, uh, yeah. something, if, if, assuming they they have the space, they have that. And there's a lot of properties that are retrofitting their properties with, with some type of a dog park, uh, you know, different shapes oh, yeah. and sizes. Yeah, they're putting in uh, dog parks or dog runs. They have the artificial grass that's made specifically for this. They're putting drain uh, drains in places so it can just be washed off. Um, but yeah, if you don't, I mean, maybe you don't want to go to that expense, but you have an open area and you could fence it in and turn it into a dog run. And, you know, it's a great, that way people don't have to leave the property. They can stay right on at home and have their, their pet outside. And it just, it just works well. And again, that's about building community because if you go back to that, everybody's going to be standing outside talking with the other dog owners and it just creates a great environment for people. Yeah, and <clears throat> you went further, I think, in in your um, article to talk about creating, <coughs> excuse me, partnership with dog daycare facilities and veterinarians and so forth. Uh, yeah. What, what what have you found yeah. with that? You uh, well, the um, there's a property that I know of that they went out and created. Um, if you are going to be leaving town and you know you need some place to get your dog, they give you a discount. Um, because they do, you know, everybody in that building, and they'll come and pick them up even. So um, creating those kind of partnerships, uh, making it as easy for your tenants, for your community um, to handle these things is is priceless. And I think I, I know that when I go visit uh, communities and I walk into the management office, it seems like more and more I'm seeing – uh, you know, little jars or, or, or so forth that have dog treats in them for, for the, the, yep. the residents to bring by. And, and, you know, I guess, I guess, I guess the message is um, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that your residents and prospective residents who walk in know that you're a, you're a pet friendly uh, community. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to understand a lot of these people, Paul, really, they see these animals as their, their children. Sure. And, you know, it's you've you've really got to keep that in mind because of you know seventy percent of the market, that's a big chunk. Right. You want to be catering to it as best you can, you know. But and also have pet insurance, just in, you know. Sure. All that. You know, George, I, I, I'm I'm going to ask you what what are some of the other hot amenities uh, right now that uh, you're seeing or uh, properties utilize to try and uh, uh, attract and, and keep their residents. Well, there, there's a few things that uh, we're, we're seeing on the market and also in the, within the multifamily industry that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, um, a lot of it, uh, there are some places that are actually building lockers um, for all the package deliveries. You know, one of the largest uh, REITs that owns apartments, uh, you know, they've seen a, a triple, a, a threefold increase in package deliveries from just 2016. And you know th- that they're having to deal with that. So uh, with their with their maintenance as well, um, you know, having to hold them and and whatnot in larger developments. Um, but to help them out, they're actually creating lockers and working in conjunction sometimes even with Amazon to put Amazon lockers in. Um, in addition to that, uh, they're creating a little bit more of a kind of a smart system where when there is package or mail being delivered, their the tenant is automatically notified. <laughs> of that so you know they know that they can come down and that there's mail there as opposed to running down doing that Um, some of the other amenities that we're starting to see um, is everything from bike storage um, with especially in the large urban areas and uh, as well as uh, you know we're looking at uh, different um, uh, companies creating partnerships with 
you know, whether it's uh, restaurants um, or, you know, as, as Joe mentioned, dog walkers, um, but also, you know, you're looking at um, having the – uh, the local community kind of get involved as well and creating that um, as an amenity and, and building that into it. You know, the neat thing as well that I've seen is we're starting to see a switch from, you know, a lot of people are, are getting food delivery. Right. Um, and, uh, um, you know, not as many people are cooking. So a dishwasher is not as, as, uh, uh, as, uh, desirable any as much as nowadays, as much as perhaps a washer and dryer. And there are some new systems out there that actually work um, that were designed specifically to retrofit apartments for the taking the dishwasher out and putting a, a one-unit washer-dryer that fits perfectly in that space. And you can actually charge extra for that. I know uh, we, we have clients that have uh, retrofitted, and, you know, the cost of it's about, uh, I think, $1,100 for the unit, uh, eleven to $1,200 for the unit, plus the basic installation. It already has water and plumbing because the dishwasher's there, and it's a one-piece unit, but they actually charge $35 extra a month to wow. have that installed. So it pays for itself pretty quickly, and it's actually a great little amenity because people like, you know, everyone, no matter what, people are going to have to do laundry. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, they like that privacy. They like having the the uh, ability to do that there. And so, you know, there, there's looking at those kind of amenities that um, are, one, is going to set the apartment apart from everybody else, but also uh, potentially increase your income and or occupancy levels. You know, right. uh, Joe mentioned a, a stat that, you know, 70% of, uh, of a lot of the renters right now um, have pets. Um, it's interesting in that the pet-friendly buildings, 90% of them are occupied with pets, the ones that are actually open and willing to pet. So you're actually attracting a uh, more of those types of tenants than the average uh, building out there. And you know, basic law, law of supply and demand: if your demand is up, you're going to be able to raise rents as well. Right, right. You know, and and one of the things that, that I think is um, you know most properties have these days uh, is obviously a. Uh, you know, workout facility, uh, and and what I've seen happen on some properties. I remember going to one property on a Saturday to visit a, a manager, and uh, they were there was a big truck outside loading back into the truck about twenty you know spin cycle uh, bicycles. And so the, the when I asked the manager about it, she said, "Yeah, as, as a, a service to kind of create community as well as an amenity, we have regular classes." Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. we can't afford to to to, to have twenty, uh, bis- you know, bicycles in here. But the the we made a deal with a company that that brings in instructors and they bring their own bicycles. And I just thought that was a, you know, great Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yoga, yoga, um, uh, different different types of you know, like uh, we've seen yoga uh, instructors come in. They give yoga classes. Um, a you know, they even have like a uh, you can do a happy hour kind of yoga r- uh, relaxation after work. Um, we've seen that happen um, where you're actually bringing in things that, uh, you know, as opposed to the resident having to go, you know, they come home, having to go out, go back to the gym or do something like that. You're actually trying to create that for them within the community. And, and again, it goes back to building community. Yeah. And, and, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And you had mentioned, uh, you know, people don't like to cook and so forth. And I, and I know and we've only got about uh, less than a minute left but in this segment. But the... Um, uh, one of, one of my uh, previous guests said that they have properties sometimes that have old clubhouses that aren't being used, and they'll use that space for classes like uh, you know yoga and so forth. But they'll also use it to bring in a pop up restaurant or a pop up retail space, mm-hmm. and um, and they don't necessarily get any additional revenue out of that for doing that. But they're but they're obviously uh, using that to create an amenity that that is being used as well as uh, giving uh, the you know the sense of community again to, to their residents, but we're going to, we're going to take a break. We're going to be back with our third segment of multifamily matters right after these messages. You're listening to multifamily matters because multifamily matters. Your property and liability insurance is one of your highest expenses. 
Put Ted W. Allen & Associates 50 plus years of experience in multifamily insurance to work for you. If you have multiple properties on separate policies, you may qualify for a master policy, which can eliminate the need for multiple insurance renewals and provide you significantly lower premiums. Call Ted W. Allen & Associates at 281-378-7500. That's 281-378-7500 or online at tedwallen.com. Looking for cost savings and curb appeal? Call WaterLogic, the nation's specialist in multifamily property water management. Using interactive, smart water technology, WaterLogic's professionals can help you save up to 40% on irrigation water annually, potentially adding tens of thousands of dollars back into your budget. Call WaterLogic at 713-983-9555 for a no-cost irrigation usage analysis. Your property will look great, and you'll be a hometown hero. Tired of being burned by your carpet vendor? Nobody has you covered like Rasa Floors. They lead the industry with same-day service and cutting-edge technology, like their online ordering portal and mobile app, so you can place orders instantly. The professionals at Rasa Floors are the industry experts offering the hottest new styles of carpet and hard surfaces that will help you achieve your goals. Visit them on social media, watch their videos, and look for them at local trade shows. Rasa Floors will help you make ready your apartment homes for new residents. For more information, visit rasafloors.com. Well, we are back and you're listening to Multifamily Matters and we're discussing several creative and interesting ideas and tips for owners and operators of multifamily properties. I'm Paul Marks. Joining me by phone from California are two multifamily industry thought leaders, Joe Killinger, a partner with Pono Asset Management, and George Pino, CEO of Commercial Brokers International. I do want to take a moment and thank our exclusive sponsors that make Multifamily Matters possible. Econserve, providing multifamily water conservation solutions for properties across the U.S. Rasa Floors, the professional flooring advisor specializing in make-ready replacement flooring for the multifamily industry throughout Texas and Oklahoma. WaterLogic, the smarter way to water, providing professional irrigation water management. And Ted W. Allen & Associates, specializing in multifamily habitational insurance since 1967. Uh, guys, we uh, were talking during the break. You, Joe, you had a, a very uh, interesting article that you had written, uh, the five inexpensive makeover tips uh, f- to put your leasing space at the top of the list. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so w- w- let's run through what those are. Uh, absolutely. Um, you want to think, if you have vacant units or a vacant unit, the first thing your your potential new tenant is going to see is ooh, when they pull in the property, what do the grounds look like? Make sure that you're, you know, you've got everything is all the gardening is done, or the landscaping is done. Um, everything is trimmed up nice. Um, when they come into the leasing office, make sure that it looks great. Everything's in place. You don't want the 1970s ficus tree uh, sitting there full of dust. You want to make sure that that's all cleaned <laughs> up, and maybe a fresh plant or two. Yeah. And um, and really make it appealing for them to even be in the leasing office. Now, when you get to the actual unit, um, you want to make sure it's completely clean. You, you know, you have a maintenance person that can go in and clean it all up, make sure it's dust free. If it needs a needs paint, um, you know, if it's if somebody's moved out, make sure it's painted and ready to go. Um, and do a nice job. You know, it just really make sure that you're you're you go in and check your paint. Make sure that your your painting is your painter has done a really nice job. Um, you know, that's all. You got to look at first impression. You know, and put yourself in the the renter's place. If I walk in, what what is it that I want to see? And those are those are pretty critical. You know, right off the bat, um, it really. I just think it's the the key to to getting people to really want to come in. You know, pulling in the property right. is a key to really getting you to get them to the unit to take a look at it. Well, I think I think your point is well taken. In other words, if 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 you have to park your car and walk through you know two foot tall weeds to get to the management office, you're obviously or not, trash. <laughs> you're, yeah, you know. and 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 trash is an interesting thing. I mean, I think so much of what you just said has a lot to do with the on-site team that's there. Yeah. In other words, uh, I've been to properties where <clears throat> they're immaculate, and, and obviously someone is 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 doing a great job of keeping up with that. I've been to other properties that as I walk the property with the manager uh, or assistant manager, 
there's uh, trash and they just walk right by it. Then there's other managers yeah. who I'm walking with and they'll bend over and pick up every piece of trash they see and just hold it in their hand until they can get to a trash receptacle. So and See, that's the manager you want right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the one. Yeah. You've got to find them and you better pay them well, treat them right. Yeah. And because they're going to make you the money in the end. Absolutely. I mean, they're going to be the ones that are walking around, you know, they're at night going, oh, hey, that light is out, jotting it down, letting the maintenance crew, hey, we've got lights out in the back here. We need to get that taken care of. And then we're going to walk the property and make sure that everything's, it's in good working order. Everything is maintained properly. Yeah. And, you know, when you walk in and you see that you've got a manager that really, really likes their job and is really good at it, that is going to sell your space for you. Right. You know, you also had uh, change the lights. Um, yeah. It, you know, lighting is is always a big thing. Not not only from from a, a curb appeal standpoint, but also from a health safety issue. Yeah. What 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 do you yeah, what have yeah, you, you want to make sure that you've got plenty lighting? Um, you know, make sure that you know people are coming home at night, and that they there's they want to know that they're safe. Everything is. Everything is well lit, and, you know, the pathways are lit. Um, there's really not any dark spots. You know, another thing on the um, landscaping, you want to make sure your landscaping is done right. I mean, it's as far as now, now you got me on the security, Paul. We got <laughs> kind of, but I'm thinking about, you know, we, had, we really focus on making sure that, you know, all of our landscaping, we have four or five foot, foot high bushes. We make sure that you can see underneath. You know, nobody, nothing can be hidden back there or, right. or nobody's hiding back there. Um, you really want to have that because a, a potential tenant is going to think like that. Well, we, I, I, I had a guest on once and he was talking about the, the three and seven, <coughs> excuse me, the, or maybe it was the seven and three rule, uh, which, which you want all your trees pruned up no, so that the limbs are no, you know, shorter than seven feet from the ground so you can see out and then you want your shrubs pruned down to no no taller than three foot so you've got a line of vision and from a from a safety standpoint yeah. that's what they were saying yeah i'd never heard that but yeah, yeah. that makes perfect sense yeah i'll so. remember that one <laughs> yeah no that's uh you've got to really think like that because that's what your potential tenant is really that's what they're looking at and you yeah. have to put yourself in their shoes and and you know george on, on this it's uh it's it's talking about inspect and maintain uh how do you make sure that's being done on your properties well there's a couple things to do um you know number one is uh you know first and foremost it's the training for the employees um what uh you know kind of like what you had said earlier where you see the manager that uh, picks up all you know picks up the trash as they go along well it goes hand in hand where all the employees should be looking for things that they can address and or uh, repair maintain and uh that is part of it, but you know the other part is that you should have a schedule where the maintenance crew is going in and taking a look and you know proactively taking steps to uh, inspect each unit, preferably at least once a year, but pre preferably twice a year. You know every six months, where you're walking through every single one of the units and one make sure that. It is uh, there, there's no leaks that maybe a resident isn't aware of. You know that might be behind a uh, you know a small easy leak that can fi be fixed underneath the sink. Um, if it's not fixed right away, can turn into a major repair of replacing cabinetry and wood flooring. Sure. Um, you know because of dry rot. Um, but if you're actually inspecting it and you're doing it uh, twice a year, you're going to proactively take a look at that and see those, you know, the, your, your personnel that, that are trained to see it, is, they're going to see it. Um, they should also be able to look and question, you know, if they see something that perhaps, uh, you know, is uh, maybe they're, you know, the big hot topic these days in the last few years has been mold. Um, and uh, I have my opinions about that, but, uh, you know, there, there is mold. Yeah. And uh, or or a lot of times it's mildew, um, and your employees should be trained that when they walk through to at least question it, see you know what what is that? Is that more of a maintenance cleaning issue that the resident should be taking care of, or is that perhaps a potential for a leak that's coming through the drywall or in the in in the shower that's coming up above from the from the uh, unit of above? So part of that is just uh, doing those walkthroughs, and the other part is having the employees that are trained to keep an eye out and look and make sure that they address 
issues and question issues that they may think need to be addressed. Yeah, and and and, and by the way, I did not mean to just pick on managers. I I, I also walk properties with maintenance technicians and. You have maintenance technicians who will walk right past trash, and others that'll bend over and pick up every piece of trash, and you know while they're doing it. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's that's something that, as part of a culture on a property, as far as it, within the management team, that needs to be instilled. That you know, take pride in in your property and make sure that uh, that it's clean and it's and it's uh, uh, presentable because it, it is a first impression. When you when someone walks in, and and and, and there's another thing I wanted to ask you about is um, I've had I've had some of the guests on our show talk about the fact that because things have changed so much today with the internet and social media, uh, that getting that pr- prospective resident to the site to have that first impression can sometimes be sometimes be difficult because. Uh, they don't ever make it to the site. The, the, one one of our guests says we have no idea how many people we're losing uh, from ever showing up onto the site because uh, there may be a bad review or something out there. What have you found out about that? Well, oh, I, I wasn't sure if you were no. who, who, who e- either, you're either one. You with George, go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, well, as far as the bad reviews, you know, it, it's really finding them. But you know, the, the interesting part when it comes to reviews is that. Most people don't write the review unless there's a problem. Right. Um, so, you know, for every bad review, typically speaking, unless it's really poorly managed, for every bad review, there's probably 100 good reviews waiting to be um, brought out. And part of that is, uh, again, reaching out and, you know, talking to the tenants when you go above and beyond um, doing something for a resident. Ask them to write a positive review for you. You know, it, it's uh, most people don't think to do that. They, you know, they always want to do something because they want to be heard if they're feeling that there's a neg- negative. Um, so part of that's communication. Part of that is getting those, you know, getting those good reviews as well. But also take a look and and see. You know, it, it's interesting. Some of the review sites that are out there um, are known to be kind of a pay for play, where you know they actually take off good reviews and leave bad reviews on because that's what people want to see. Um, it, it's almost kind of the uh, uh, the news uh, mentality where you know the bad news sells. Right. Yeah. And the um, be aware of that. And really, you know, when you're looking at the reviews, you can take a look at them. If it is a true negative review, comment on it. You know, own up to it. If you're the manager and, you know, you did – there was something that was wrong or the person's right, comment back to them and say, you know, I understand the situation happened. I apologize for it. Here are the steps and actions that we've taken to correct it. Right. And, you know, I think that will go uh, way above – Many, you know, many uh, above any any kind of positive review as well, because it shows that anybody looking at the reviews is is you know they're showing that they're that you actually care about them, that you're doing something to address that and to fix it. That's right. um, so that's what I would say about uh, the negative reviews and looking at it and being proactive for that. You know, your your managers, your leasing agents should actively be looking um, on the sites to look for reviews. Look at the negative reviews. Um, look for the positive reviews, and also thank people if they do write a positive review. Make sure that they know that you saw it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I was going to say that. And just you know, every time somebody does make a positive comment, you should jump on and give them a quick thank you. Yeah, and, and even ask your vendors to write reviews for you. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Well, mm-hmm. we got to take a break. We're going to be back with our final segment after this short break. You're listening to Multifamily Matters because multifamily matters. Tired of being burned by your carpet vendor? Nobody has you covered like Rasa Floors. They lead the industry with same-day service and cutting-edge technology, like their online ordering portal and mobile app, so you can place orders instantly. The professionals at Rasa Floors are the industry experts offering the hottest new styles of carpet and hard surfaces that will help you achieve your goals. Visit them on social media, watch their videos, and look for them at local trade shows. Rasa Floors will help you make ready your apartment homes for new residents. For more information, visit rasafloors.com. 
Your property and liability insurance is one of your highest expenses. Put Ted W. Allen & Associates' 50-plus years of experience in multifamily insurance to work for you. If you have multiple properties on separate policies, you may qualify for a master policy, which can eliminate the need for multiple insurance renewals and provide you significantly lower premiums. Call Ted W. Allen & Associates at 281-378-7500. That's 281-378-7500 or online at tedwallen.com. Well, we are back with our final segment of Multifamily Matters, and we're discussing several creative and interesting ideas and tips for owners and operators of multifamily properties. I'm Paul Marks. Joining me by phone from California are two multifamily industry thought leaders, Joe Killinger, a partner with Pono Asset Management, and George Pino, CEO of Commercial Brokers International. Um, one, of the, one of the articles that, that, uh, that you authored, uh, Joe, was the, fight, the five smart strategies to attract new tenants. Um, everybody is always interested in how they can attract new tenants. So let's talk about that a little bit. Tell tell our listeners yeah. what those are. I mean, it's, it is, there's a lot of inventory out there. And you really have to think, how am I going to stand out? What is what is going to make my property you know, stand out compared to the hundreds of neighboring properties? And as we talked about in the earlier segment, number one thing is, is your property well lit? Is it clean? Is your landscaping done? Um, you know, that's the first thing that they see when they're, they're walking in. And then when you get into the units, um, you know, if now if you are doing a um, – you stage the unit, make sure that you stage it for the community that you're in. If I go in and see a 1970s plaid couch ever again in my lifetime, <laughs> that's probably going to be one last time too many. You just don't need to see those. Right. Um, know what you're doing. Hire, actually, hire somebody. If you're going to stage, make sure you hire a professional stager. And keep it as minimal as possible because keep, people want to see their furniture in that space right. more so than what, what you've got in there. Um, so try not to force your taste on anybody. Um, really reach out to the local community, schools, um, churches. Let them know that you're you have this property, and that you are in your their community, and you would like to be you know we're, you're happy to be part of their community, and you know can you refer potential new residents over? Now, how, how do you and typically so really how, getting yourself out there within the community, talking to everybody? I mean, you as the owner, and and if you have the property manager, make sure they're out there. That needs to be a big part of their day is talking to the neighbors. So, so you all the retail churches, schools, getting so, to know everybody. So what you're so what you're advocating is is getting the the manager involved in making the rounds in the neighborhood to talk to in the, the community in the community. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. That's a great idea. Or, or if your manager doesn't have time to do it, your leasing staff they should be out there talking about your, your property. Um, you know. Taking flyers out, say, listen, this is our property. This is what our units look like. If you know anybody looking for a new place, we're right over there. We're offering incentives. If you refer them in, maybe you could have you know a Starbucks card that you could give them if they refer somebody in. Sure. Um, always, don't just always go ask for something. You know, bring value to somebody. You know, say, so listen, if you refer somebody in, I'll give you twenty five dollars Starbucks card or something like that, and that's going to get their attention. Right. Other other ways to attract uh, new tenants. What, what what do you have? Oh, um, you know, the schools are probably, you know, a lot of these, that's a great place. You want to go in and talk to the schools. Um, churches, churches are a big thing that you go out and they can even have, uh, we had one uh, particular client that went in and they had a, a workout facility they no longer used. They allow the church to come in and have uh, services there or hold events there. And that brought in, people from that church that began living there then. Wow. Um, you know, it really, find out ways that you can get your property ingrained into that community. Yeah, that's that, something you really want to focus on. Yeah, that's a great idea. You also had on in the article sustainability. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, they want to see that um, you're really making a conscious effort to do something for the environment. You know, 
if you can do solar energy or you know at least the lighting LED lights um, recycling you know all that is a lot of people like to see that they really feel that you're putting something toward the community and uh, another thing is security that's another that that's kind of a big thing um, with what we're seeing is that security is kind of a big issue they want to know that you know is it depending on your community of course but you don't have to go build a twenty thousand dollar gate but um, you want to make sure that your security you've got the lighting in place that that's all lit up so they feel safe when they're around their property those are all great tips. You know, you also had another article about the importance of a move-in and move-out checklist, and we've got about three, oh, yeah. or, three or four minutes left. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you have a tenant that's moving out, you want to make sure you, you're either your manager and, and preferably your maintenance person is there. Um, you go through and make sure that you've, you've checked everything that is, is has been done to that property. Um, and what you're going to have to do to to really bring the property back up to leasing, what it what it should look like, and you know it can really that's key, that's key for us because when they as soon as they move out the day that they're moving out we go in and we check everything off from the paint uh, the quality of the paint the quality of the carpet you know how the wear and tear, and then you're going to have to look at see. Um, what it's going to cost you to fix that property back up. And then when your tenant, new tenant moves in, you're going to have your checklist. You go back to, okay, we we just painted that wall. We just did that new carpet or we just cleaned that carpet. And so it just gives you some, a base to go back to. Because um, we were, I was dealing with a situation yesterday with a tenant where she just said, I need new carpet. Well, we just put carpet in in, in December. Oh. And so, and she had, there was an iron, there was something that happened to burn a hole in it, and she wanted new carpet. So we just went back to the list and showed her, like, listen, we just put new carpet in here. Here's the invoice. Here's the uh, move-in list. And so it really can save you a lot of headaches down the road. Sure. And uh, <clears throat> as far as, I, I guess that also helps you with when, when someone has a security deposit and you, you, you've got to get in there and do your your checklist. To oh, see, yeah. See, yeah, see you'll know you... how much you need to, to yes. put for the uh, – if you're going to capture some of that security deposit, you'll know exactly how much then. So, Because I'll sign off on it. Yeah. George, what have you found in, in regards to uh, move-in and move-outs and how to handle those things? Well, the move in move out, I think, is, is fantastic. Um, I would probably also recommend that perhaps, um, you know, in this day and age, we have so, uh, so many uh, such ease of access to digital photos, but sure. also take photos of the of the condition of the property on the move out, move in, and also on the move out. More importantly, um, you know, make sure that uh, you test the, you know, not just look at the the walls for scratches and 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 or holes or things like that but check the appliances make sure they're in working condition so that you know they don't come back to you in a week or two months saying that you know this never worked yeah, this is what's happening and uh you know and also you know it, it happens when people move in they bang the walls sometimes um you know but you don't want them to come back and say that was already there so on a move-in inspection, it's really there to protect you, but it's also there to protect the resident as well, because they know exactly what they if there was damage, you know, or, or something. They they make note of it, you know, so that they're not held liable for it at the end um, when they do move out, and you come back and say. You know, there's uh, a big scratch in this uh, wood floor, and they can come back and uh, to the move-in inspection and say, no, no, it was there when we moved in. See. And so it protects the resident as well. Um, it's there. The uh, move in, move out is there not just for the landlord, but also for the resident. And you know that's what I would suggest is make sure that you're there. And also take a take photos of uh, of the items that maybe uh, um, have additional wear and tear that, during the move in that they've accepted in that condition. Sure. Well, guys, it's <clears throat> you know, Joe. I start out by saying you're prolific writer of, of these articles <laughs> those are just a few of the ones that i that i wanted to talk about so there was plenty more that you that you uh, had posted but i do want to uh, let our listeners know a little bit more about you guys and and uh, tell us uh, how you got started in the industry and uh, what you're doing and if someone wanted to reach you how they could reach you and, and either one of george you could start if you'd like sure uh well 
Uh, I've been in the real estate business now for about 31 years, um, starting off uh, primarily uh, doing sales um, throughout, uh, actually throughout the country. Started investing in multifamily assets uh, probably in the mid 90s, um, and uh, uh, just kept uh, investing in that class. Right now, we currently, um, you know, as you mentioned, CEO of uh, Commercial Brokers International. We have a uh, headquartered in Los Angeles. We have a group and team of agents that specialize in different types of uh, investment sales and uh, commercial leasing uh, throughout the, you know, investment sales throughout the country, uh, leasing and uh, whatnot uh, throughout the Los Angeles area. And uh, we help clients uh, from all aspects of the commercial real estate, even when it comes to uh, helping them, uh, uh, you know, take a look at financing, um, uh, you know, which is something that all owners should also take a look at too is you know see when their financing's coming up prepare for it ahead of time and potentially look to potentially refinance to save money sure that's great and if someone wanted to reach you how could they do it well uh easiest way to reach me is uh via email g p i n o at c b i commercial dot com uh or you know you can always call me uh at three one oh nine four three eight five three six all right, great, great. Uh, Joe, we've got about a minute and 15 seconds. I can fill that. Uh, <laughs> I work with uh, Pono Asset Management. Uh, it's a holding company for George and I. We have a, a few companies. We have, obviously, George is um, the CEO of Commercial Brokers International. We have a property management company in uh, Los Angeles, LLC Property Management. And we have an investment company under Commercial Brokers International, which, uh, which is actually a player to be named. We're getting ready to name that company and launch it. So, okay. um, And then I, myself, do some mentoring with real estate agents and um beginning real estate investors across the country. And so um, George and I have been in business. I guess he kind of told you our story. We've we started companies for other people, figured out that maybe we should do this on our own, <laughs> start our own company. And uh, it's worked out pretty well. So um, I'm in Los Angeles most of the time. Uh, you can get hold of me at joe at joekillinger.co. That's joe, J-O-E, at J-O-E-K-I-L-L-I-N-G-E-R.co. 310-943-8542. That's great. Well, thank you guys for being on. It was very informative and educational. I know our listeners will enjoy it. Um, we're going to be back uh, next Friday and each and every Friday at 10 a.m. right here on 1110 a.m. KTEK. We'll have another great topic and power panel of industry experts. You've been listening to Multifamily Matters because multifamily matters. Thank you for listening to Multifamily Matters, a weekly radio show that discusses current topics and trends in the multifamily industry. To find out more about the show or make suggestions for topics or interesting guests, go to multifamilyradio.com. You have been listening to Multifamily Matters because multifamily matters.